Hello POEers, I'm wearing my UMBC shirt here to commemorate the historic win, 16 over number one. All right, we are talking about trusses. Down the road, what we'd want to be able to do as an engineer is look at a bridge like that and understand all the forces that are taking place at every single point, think back to our free body diagrams, and on every single element or member of that bridge. That's where we'd want to get. And for those of you who are watching this live, just last Thursday or Friday, there was a catastrophe in Florida where some engineers, somebody messed up big time and a big concrete footbridge collapsed on a highway and killed some people. And somebody's gonna be in big trouble. Somebody knew something right. So that's of course the kind of thing engineers wanna make sure they don't do. So we got to make sure that we would understand all the forces that are on work something like this. Now I'm showing you that bridge now because we are going to talk about something in a moment called pinned supports and roller supports. And from some of the things we've looked at before, we know that bridge is going to experience some movement. It, even though we're, we're in statics where we assume nothing moves, there are things that are going to make that bridge move. And so it has to be able to give somewhat. And so what I have here are some pictures of some roller supports. That one I know is very hard to see, but it's shot up towards a bridge and you can drive down the highway and look for these things. Sometimes they're buried back in underneath and you can't see them. They don't all look like that, but there are three little rollers that that entire bridge structure is sitting on. Let's get a better picture. Close up. So again, we have a bridge. I, you can't really get proportionate there, but this is supporting whatever's going across, automobiles, a train. The bridge is sitting on this pad, which is resting on one, two, three, four, it looks like five rollers. So that bridge is able to move back and forth in this direction without resistance somewhat, okay? Now if I back up, here's a really good one. I wish there was a person there again to see the proportion, we can't. But here you have a bridge sitting on this big roller. Now at the end of this plate, and at the end of this plate, there are welded on some steel bars, so that roller can't actually just roll infinitely. It is gonna come to a place where it's gonna stop, okay? But there is a fair amount of movement that that bridge can go back and forth on. That's a roller support, and that's going to come in uh, very prominently in our calculations when we do our trusses. So I, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today. So I wanted to point that out to you. So you can imagine, picture no friction. Obviously, there's some friction there, but in our world, of course, there's no friction. If I were to push on that bridge, there'd be absolutely no resistance in this direction, in the X direction. It would just be free to move. Does there forces in the Y direction, does it resist? Yes, it certainly does. If something is pressing down on it, there's a normal force pushing up on that, but there is no force in the X. So drive down the highway, you'll see them. They're all kinds of different shapes. A few years ago, we had a guy in here from High Steel, and now they're actually going to like big pads that just rest on each other, and whatever membrane, membrane is in there is made to be somewhat frictionless, so you don't see as many rollers, it's just like pads, but they're it's made to move back and forth, all right? And I found this site. What are some of the things that will make that bridge move? Wind. Wind. Yes, we saw that video the other week. Wind. Oh, good word, yes. Earthquakes for those of us dummies. Seismic activity, very good. Volcanoes. Volcanoes, I guess I could come in. Is it the lava flow or the shaking you're talking about? Both, okay. All right, how about a little more normal than these once in a, you know, millennial type events? All right, there's going to be tension on it. There's going to be compression and tension and it's going to flex as somebody drives over it. Cool. What else? Oh, I thought we had wind. It's another weather element. temperature that is going to expand and contract due to temperature you see that on bridges a lot when you're going over long bridges and they'll say warning for the motorcycles and you see the metal teeth in the bridge and you drive over them with your car when that bridge it contracts because of cold weather they can open up and it doesn't affect a car's tire but if you're on a motorcycle you want to be careful 
Okay, but anyway, so those are different things that can make these bridges move. All right, let me get out of that a second. Now, we are not going to do... Two one five, because two one five, you guys have it. Uh, I don't have a ruler with. Oh, this will work. If we were to have you do two one five, which was my original plan, you would get a yardstick. Let's pretend that's a yardstick, and you would stand here and hold it like this. You'd have somebody hold it like this at the end, as much as they can, like that. Okay. Then you'd take a weight and you'd hang it out there about a foot. Okay. And you'd see if they could keep it perpendicular or par horizontal. Let's go that way. And then you'd calculate the moment. What is a moment? It's a circular motion. And how do we calculate the actual force of the moment? Let me ask you this. If I had a weight hanging one foot out and I could hold it, I move it to two feet out. Has the moment increased or decreased? Am I feeling more or less force? More. Moment is force times distance. So they just have you do this on a yardstick and hold it out there to actually feel and experience the weight of that thing increasing. That's what a moment is. I don't think we need to do that. You guys understand moments, well, at least before I asked you those questions, I thought you understood moments. But anyway, a moment we'll look at in a second. So let's go through this PowerPoint. Uh, this is in 215, so you could refer to this. All right, so a moment. The moment of a force is measured is a measure of the tendency of the force to rotate the body upon which it acts. So it wants to rotate, as Christian said. Okay, so we did this way back when we were doing simple machines and we were doing levers. We knew if we wanted a seesaw to be balanced, the moments on either side had to be equal. So if I am f pushing on this lever, there is a force and there is a distance and it's going to make it turn if that's the only force acting upon it okay so we have a force pressing down on it we have a distance away from the pivot point you multiply those two together and you get the moment distance times force review hopefully you got that but on a bridge structure on these trusses there are moments happening all over it this truss above us is supported on either end of this room if I stand in the middle of it, I am forcing it down, but this point over here is going to feel a moment, and that point over there is going to feel a moment. So, in order to add moments, it's important to know the direction. Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Okay, that's important. When we were doing our vectors, we had to know is it a negative or a positive? So, moments are going to be negative or positive. That's important because when we figure out if our structure is statically determinate, if it is secure, they got to all add up to zero. That's getting ahead a little bit. But counterclockwise is positive, sort of not too intuitive, and clockwise is negative. Now there's a simple way to remember that that they show here. It's the right hand rule. Think of that door over there. Okay, if that door is swinging on those hinges, okay, hinges are the point and the door is swinging is the moment I wrap my finger, the door is going that way if it's opening. I wrap my finger like that and if my thumb is pointing up, it's a positive moment. If it's swinging the other way, now it's swinging the other way, I have to turn my hand this direction because it's swinging closed, my thumb is pointing down, that's a negative moment. We're not going to do too many things that are vertical. Most of ours are going to be horizontal. So if it is swinging this way, if I had a bar here like this, here's the pivot and forced it down that way that's turning that direction. And if the thumb is towards you, it's positive. However, if I had this pivoting here, was forcing up, the moment is now going that direction. I have to turn my hand because my fingers are going to go the direction of the moment and it's away from me, it's negative. So you got to keep in track whether the moments are positive or negative because you're going to be adding them up. And in the end, our goal is to make them all equal to zero. And of course, if you have a negative and a positive, that's possible. But if you have all negatives or all positives, they're not going to equal zero. So you got to be sure of that. All right. So negative or positive? 
positive because it's pointing towards me. I think we can guess that's probably negative because it's now rotating the other direction. So, now it gets a little interesting. Here I'm going to calculate the moment that's working on this wrench. 40 pounds of, or yeah, 20 pounds of force, 9 inches away. What's my total moment calculation? Be careful there. Screwed me up this morning. Derek, is a little light on the back of the mic green? Yeah. Cool. Christian? 180? Okay. Pounds, feet. But that says inches. So be careful of that. It's three quarters of a foot. So it's actually 20 times 0.75. Anybody get an answer? 20 times 0.75 should be 15. Negative or positive? positive? Going this direction. So I put my hand there. My thumb is pointing away from me. It should be negative. Negative 15 foot-pounds. Okay, so when we would normally calculate out the numbers before, we didn't worry about negative or positive. We, I mean, we treated every number as positive when we did moments. But now when we're doing our statics calculations, we got to know, is that moment negative or positive? Now, let's throw a little wrench on the wrench. Okay, there we have uh, one foot-pound. I want to get, here we go. Look at this wrench. I don't know if there is such a wrench. Maybe there is to get in some odd corner. But you can't get your hand here to do this, so they put this on here, and you're going to push that direction. How much force is actually working here in this moment? The force is, this is one foot away, this is 20 foot-pounds, however, in a moment calculation, the distance has to be perpendicular to the force. Is that distance perpendicular to the force? No, they're parallel. So. We make a rectangle out of that. We just got through doing our vectors. We know, well, this distance is the same as this distance. So this force, force pushing out here would be the same as if it were here and I was pushing right there. So I can take that distance, which is three inches, pretend I'm pushing it over right here, and now they are perpendicular to each other. And now I'm doing the 20 times the three inches, which would be a quarter of a foot. And is it going to be, it's going to be negative because it's rotating that way and I have negative five foot-pounds. Okay, so out here, they're parallel, that can't be. I can move it over, it's pointing at that point right there, and the distance is this direction because they have to be perpendicular to each other. Now let's really make this wrench screwy. So if I'm forcing it out here, where am I going to get the distance, knowing that it has to be perpendicular to the force? Where is it going to be found? Which direction? On which axes? Let's say that. If it's perpendicular to the force, on which axes will the distance be? On the Y? Is that perpendicular to the force? X is perpendicular to the force. Fortunately, you're not on camera. I won't bring your name up, you know, to be recorded forever with that answer. But uh, all right, so we got to look at, hey, let's say this is 8 inches. Let's say this is 10 inches. Now we're 18 inches, which is a foot and a half. So there's my distance that's perpendicular to the force. That doesn't mean squat on this calculation. Okay, so it's 8 plus 10, which is a foot and a half, should get 30. And it's counterclock or it's clockwise, so it is negative. Any questions at this point? I know it's kind of very dry right now. Hang in there. This gets a little more interesting. Here I am, Jack Sparrow, steering the Black Pearl. Okay? And we have this great mechanical advantage because I got this huge helm that I'm steering. And I'm just pushing along over way out here, you know, with my little finger, steering the ship. Okay? What actually is the moment that's working on that thing? Yes, awesome animation. There's the force. He's British, so he's passing with 100 Newtons. Okay? The distance from the pivot perpendicular is 50 centimeters. So I have 100 Newtons, 
50 centimeters. So what would my moment be? First of all, is it going to be positive or negative? Positive. Why do you say positive voice from wherever you came from? Correct. And I take my little fingers. I say, I can't remember the rule, but if I go like this, oh, it's going that way. It's positive because my thumb's for, facing towards me. So yes, it's going to be a positive number. It's force times distance. This isn't too bad. Force times distance, use the right hand rule, and we get 50 Newton meters. Wonderful. This is a very theoretical world where they're always perpendicular to each other. Things aren't always perpendicular or parallel, are they? Okay. So, if you might remember way back when we were talking about when I was saying Avery and I are pushing against each other and we both push with 100 pounds of force, we're just going to sit there. But if he pushes in one direction at 100 and I start to angle mine, oh, things are going to start changing now because they're just not uh, parallel to each other. So, look at we could use right here. If I were pressing with 100 newtons, but I fell asleep. So my force went off to the side at 50 degrees from the negative y axis. How are we going to figure that out? Christian. 